Have you heard about the down payment assistance programs or the DPA programs in your area and you're wondering if you could take advantage of it? Do you try to look up online and you're just kind of overwhelmed at all the information that's out there on what these programs offer both at the state and the county or the city level um, and you just want to take advantage to see if you could use it in your next home purchase? <laughs> My name is Janine Rosario and I'm a realtor here in the Central Florida and Orlando area and I know this is a big question that comes up all the time is I'm looking to buy a home do I qualify for the first time home buyers down payment assistance programs right and what is the definition of a first time home buyer so today I am going to be interviewing um, a local lender so we're gonna go over the pros and cons of the down payment assistance programs. So check it out and don't forget to stay till the end. So hi, Rocio, thank you for joining me today. Hi, hi Johnny, thank you for inviting me. Thank you. I wanted to get together because I thought it was really important um, to go over some of the pros and cons on the down payment assistance programs, right? Yep, great but question. As a realtor, I get a lot of questions about what are the programs, how many are there, how do I qualify, what's the max amount, you know, sometimes you hear 7,500 or 10,000 or how does it really work? So I, I invited you to come today so that you can give us more information, good information, right, on how, what are the pros and cons of this program. Oh, okay. I want you to give us a little information on your background, how you came to the sure. and your title. Sure. Okay. Again, thank you for inviting me. So again, my name is Rocio Mendez. I'm with Homespire Mortgage. I've been in the banking industry for over 17 years. Um, I've been a loan officer for over eight years. Um, I'm very familiar with all the programs, the down payment assistance programs for the uh, pretty much the whole state because <laughs> um, we work with the state programs, the county programs, which we can go over more in detail of each individual one. And I'm glad I'm here because like you said, there's so much information that we need to provide to uh, first time home buyers um, because there's money that is available for them. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's really good to know. And thank you for that. And so you've been in the Central Florida area, right? Correct. Is that the one you've been in for eight years? Oh, yes. I come from South Florida as well. So yeah, I've been in Central Florida for four years. Okay. So all within the state Actually, of Florida. Right. So that's good. All so in the from... state of Florida, yeah. Different perspective. Okay, good. So what I'm going to say is, can you give us what are three pros that we okay. need to talk about and then the three cons or, you know, disadvantages of the DPA programs at the different levels for <clears throat> Um, area. Okay, sure. So let me start with um, Florida housing. Okay, let's start with the state program. So Florida housing, and you people will refer more to the bond program, B-O-N-T. Um, again, it's a state program. Um, there's no limitations on areas um, or counties. Um, what we do as a loan officers is that when we are working on a pre-approval with the, with the first time home buyer, we are making sure that they qualify not only for our loan as a lender, but that we also are meeting the Florida housing guidelines. Okay? So not all the banks are approved with Florida housing. We are approved with them. And, and in order to do that, we had to learn all the guidelines. Uh, what guidelines are referring to is there's income limits, okay? So as we are talking with these first-time home buyers, I'm asking questions about how much is your income, 
uh, we're going to need to know how many people are going to be living in the household because the Florida housing program um, is going to ask for every single person that lives in the household and if they have any income. Okay, so to answer your question, the three pros of this program will be one, that there's money available to cover the down payment. Um, there's a second mortgage that is 7,500, okay? And 7,500 is a big, big help to cover the down payment, especially in the market that we are right now, that is hard for sellers to provide seller contributions because there's so many offers out there. Um, so that's one of the benefits. <clears throat> the, the second benefit, um, there's also a second um, loan for $10,000. Um, that one, there's some monthly payment that, that we will include in our, in our calculations, but also is a great option that is out there. Um, and the third option is that if you get some discounts in your tax when they're calculating your closing costs. Okay, so that would be like the three benefits of, of getting this program. Now, you mentioned something about the income limits, right? Correct. So I'm yes. sure people are wondering, what are some of those guidelines for the income? So can we give an example if there's just two working uh, people in the household? So that could be like a couple. Um, and then an example of maybe three or four <laughs> income coming into the home. Work. Okay. So it, it varies um, uh, per county, okay? And there's a really good tool in the Florida Housing website where you just include in there how many people are gonna live in the house and what county are you looking to live? And it will give you the income limits, but just to give you an idea, <clears throat> I'm in Orange County. So the income limits, and I can, they were updated late, uh, recently, but it, just to give you an idea, they're about 55,000, and I can double check the amount uh, for a family at two, and about 60 for family at three, but I'll, I'll, I'll put in the comments the correct um, income limits. What I'll do is I'm going to put the link um, in this description box and then write to the, the calculator so that people could just go online and then change how many people That's are in the household. To correct. See. Correct. But because Florida... I'm sorry to interrupt because Florida Housing keeps updating the income limit. So we want to make sure that we are up to date with them. Right. And we want to make sure that <laughs> we're giving them the most up-to-date info. So I'll include Correct. that below. So that's fine. They'll have it. And then, you know, what we're talking about here is definitely what you've seen in your experience um, and your opinion. But they need to go into yeah. Correct. So for a family at two, and I'm going to use Orange County as an example, for a family at two, the income limit will be 63900 mm -hmm. And for family at three or more, will be 73485 Okay. 73000 Okay. So now, and, and again, I'll leave the link below so you guys can check out your personal information for your family as things vary by family, right? Family. Correct. So now let's hear what are the cons. What do we need to be careful and looking out for? Mm -hmm. Okay, so um, one of the cons would be that there's going to be a second mortgage um, linked to your property for over the life of the loan. Okay, um, so if the, if if you're going to have the loan for thirty years, so you're going to have that second lien for over thirty years. Um, if you're going to refinance if you're going to sell the house, if you're going to convert the house to an investment property. So mm -hmm. then you will just have to pay back the 7,500 to Florida Housing. All right. Okay. So let me just, let me just reiterate that because I think it's important um, for people to hear, right? 
So an example would be if a couple, a family, takes out one of these $7,500 DPA program loans. It's okay. the, as a second loan on the property. And so if you have a 30-year loan, it's going to go the $7,500 will span the 30 years. But okay. if you choose to sell the house and move to another house within that 30 years, because 30 years is a long time. So... <laughs> refinance because things change in your financial uh, situation before 30 years is up um if for any reason you need to change the title right on the home you get married you get divorced those type of things in any of those situations you're gonna have to pay back the full 7500 correct right. to continue with whatever it is you're trying to do refinance sell whatever that is if you're trying to do it before the 30-year mark. Correct. That's correct. I think that's really important for people to understand. And then the second one would be? And the second will be um, that get ready uh, for... Um, for underwriting to ask for more conditions as if you were doing just a regular FHA or conventional loan. Just because when we're doing um, the first time home buyer programs and there's income limits, the underwriters and we as the lenders, we had to make sure that we are covering and verifying all sorts of income. So just to give you an example, in a regular FHA loan, we will not need tax returns for a W-2 uh, borrower. In this case, for these programs, we need the last three years of tax returns, okay, just because uh, we as a lenders, Florida Housing, we need to verify that for the last three years, they haven't had any ownership in any properties. So I will say, and there's other type of questions, if there's deposits in the account, then when we need to make sure that these deposits are not any, maybe part-time, second job that it has not been um, declared on the taxes. Um, as I mentioned, if there's other household members, then if they have some type of income, then we will be asking for that income as well. And, and sometimes I get the questions, but wait a minute, why are you asking me for my some part-time job? And I'm like, that's because we need to verify the household income. So I think you said two really good nuggets there that I just want to point out to people, right? Sure. So one, you said they're gonna, you're going to be looking for three years worth of income. So three years of income taxes, for example. Correct. Where you're regular conventional loan, we would be going two years back. Cool. So this is as adding an extra year. But also you're adding in, so if and this is a family and they have, you know, three kids and two of them are teenagers working part-time jobs, that income is going to count towards the household income. Correct. So if we're in a regular conventional mortgage, they wouldn't be looking at the children's income. That's correct. That's correct. That's very good, right? <laughs> I don't think a lot of people are aware of that because, you know, depending on how many kids you have, that could be add up to a lot more income. Correct. And that's, that's why, Yanni, when we're doing these type of programs, we always recommend uh, borrowers, especially first-time home buyers, to go with lenders that are um, experience in these type of programs just because we cover everything. We already know what Gloria Housing is going to ask for. We will be asking the right questions from the beginning. So the way from the beginning, uh, trust me, uh, sometimes I had to tell customers, you do not qualify for the program. But we're doing this way before they get under contract. And, and I'm explaining the reasons why. And then we get other ways, right? Maybe a gift, maybe 401k funds. We can work it out from the beginning. Which is which is is important in any uh, lender loan situation. It sure. doesn't have to be um, only for this one. <laughs> do all the other loans as well, conventional, FHA, VA, the whole the whole Oh yeah. Products. Correct. Yes. So I just wanted people to understand that because um, I'm specifically we're specifically going over the DPA programs just because there's a lot of confusion around them and a lot of people are more familiar with conventional VA type loans. Um, right. 
So I just want to point that out. And then the third and final con would be. Um, I will say that we had to be ready to pay extra fees. Um, so yes, you get in money, uh, but you also pay one point origination fee. Um, and there's other application fees that we had to pay to, to, to Florida Housing to process this type of uh, down payment assistance, okay? So, so I will say that's, that's different also from a regular, from a regular loan. Mm -hmm. um, again, in my opinion, and I wanna share this, is that for me, it's a great program because if you don't have the funds right now, to for your down payment then this is a great program and then we had to pay the fees well we paid the fees right because there's not any other option but if i have a customer that they have funds that they can pull from a 401k or from a gift from a from a family member uh, maybe the program is not for them so that's our job to be able to guide them the right way mm -hmm. okay and that you summed it up very well there i just oh, wanted to give <laughs> <laughs> I just want to give people um, a general idea, so generic, using generic numbers. Um, let's say that the house they're purchasing, the sale price is $250,000, right? Correct. Looking for the, um, the DPA program with the $7,500 assistance. So when you say extra fees and 1% origination fee, can you, can you use those numbers and let us know what that means? So okay, I can give you an idea. So let's say in a $250,000 purchase, right? Yeah, let's talk about an FHA loan. Yeah, let's just go with easy numbers. Right? $200,000 in purchase price. We're going to go with the, the DPA program at the state level for the $7,500. Correct. What, how much, or just general estimate, how much would those extra fees be? Okay, so let's say in a 250 purchase price, right? Um, by the way, the down payment on this particular scenario now that we're using this, it will be 8,750, out of which you're getting 7,500 to cover the down payment, right? So that, that's pretty much covering the down payment. Um, so let's say, let me just, um, just give you uh, 250. There's 8750 C. There's upfront MI, uh, but just without the upfront MI, the loan amount is going to be 240, 241,000. Mm -hmm. And let's say upfront MI for a mortgage for an FHA, let's use that your loan is going to be for 245,000, just, just an okay. estimate. Whatever it is. <laughs> so, yeah. So, in that case, 1% origination fee will be 2,500. Right, that's that's one percent origination fee, mm -hmm. and there's other fees. Um, on the top of my head, they're uh, three hundred and another four hundred. Um, I may be wrong, but they're uh, close around that amount. So the so the extra fee is four. I'm sorry, you said four hundred. So in that case, yeah. will be yeah. So let's say we're looking at twenty four hundred. Um, let's say around three thousand. Okay. Around three thousand, but but you also saving on on other uh, closing fees. So okay. we can definitely um, balance the fees with with other uh, discounts that you get at closing. Okay, okay. okay. Just so they get an idea that there's um, additional steps there, and that's why when I'm working with buyers. Um, we're looking for, you want to work with lenders who are very knowledgeable, not only Perfect. in the, just in the, you know, the regular um, conventional loan space or the other types of loan options, but in the DPA space, it's, it's totally different. So you want to make sure that you're working with a realtor in your area and that you're working with a lender who's very knowledgeable in the programs and the county programs in your area in Florida so that Perfect. you can get the correct information for where you're looking to purchase a home. Correct. Correct. Okay. So uh, this is a lot of good information, Josia. I have to say that. Great information. <laughs> Um, I'm going to ask, so if people want to contact you, how sure, do sure. you reach out to you? 
Okay, okay. So, so I, again, I'm with Homespire Mortgage, and you can contact me through my website, which is um, www.homespiremortgage-rmendez. That's my, my website. Um, or my email, rmendez at homespiremortgage.com. All right. And I'm going to leave that information in the link in the description box below. Oh, please so do. Way, yeah, sure. this way it's easy for them to contact you in case they want to um, ask more questions. And sure, you know, I'd be happy to answer. Thank you, Rocio. And thank you for bringing your expertise and all of this information to us because it's something that is greatly needed out there in, in just the environment that we are today. Oh, you're welcome. Anytime. Thank you guys for watching. Hopefully we answered all the questions that you had on the down payment assistance program. If you still have any more questions, feel free to contact me, click on the link below. So you could go to my website and contact me there of any questions that you still need answered. As always, don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel.